Hi, I'm Paul from Production Expert. This is the fourth video in the series where we are using a UED Apollo interface to track and mix a song. If you haven't seen videos one, two and three, go back and watch them to see how we have got to this stage, which is video four, mixing the drums. We're going to start with the kick drum, but let's remind ourselves of the song we're going to be working with. Trying to pretend we're okay, we can be friends, but it's not that simple, dear. We got so much history here, and I don't believe that we are meant to be. Okay, let's solo the kick. So as you can hear, it's an 8 to 8 sounding kick. Even though this kick is quite a well-rounded sounding kick, I just want to boost the bottom end a little bit. So let's go to our EQs, and I'm going to insert the Helio 69. I'm not actually going to boost the frequencies here. I'm just going to switch on the 60 hertz circuit, and you'll hear instantly that it's added more weight to the sound. Let's bypass that. Switch it in. So as is typical with 808 kicks, they lack a bit of high mids. So let's boost about 4.5k. And let's boost about 2dB. A bit more, I think. So now, as you can hear, we've got more click in there as well. So let's bypass that. bring it in and let's hear that in the track so to me that has now made the kit far more well-rounded and it just pokes through the mix just a little bit more so now let's have a look at the snares as you can see here we've got snare one snare two and a snare roll Let's have a listen to Snow One first of all. So as you can hear, it's a programmed snare and it's already quite compressed. And if you look at the waveform here, it's very even. So what I want to do here is just to make it poke out the mix a little bit more. And UAD have just released the Chandler Curve Bender. So let's use that. This is the sort of EQ that you can really abuse and it always sounds great. So I'm going to add some high mids here and I'm going to boost 3.6k and then what I'm going to do is to crank it right up. Let's bypass it. In. Hit that in the track. So now the snare is just poking out the mix just a little bit more. But I want to add a bit of weight to it as well. So let's keep it on 150 hertz there. And let's give that a bit of a boost as well. Trying to pretend we're okay, we can be friends, but it's not that simple, dear. We got so much history here. And and so, so now that's rounded off the bottom of the snare drum just nicely. Let's bypass it. And in. And in the track. So that's really poking through the mix now. So at the moment the snare drum's quite dry, so let's add some reverb to it as well. So for the snare reverb, I'm going to use the AKG BX20. I'm going to solo save the snare verb here. And let's turn up the send. I really like the way that that's sounding already, but I'm going to adjust the pre-delay to let the initial transient through before we hear the reverb. Let's see what happens if I crank up the pre-delay to about 100 milliseconds there. Let's turn it all the way down. So as you can hear, now we've got a bloom that comes in after the initial snare hit. Let's hear that again. And let's hear that in the track. Down the center and that's about perfect for me. So now let's move on to snare two. Let's solo that. So 
So I really like the way that this snare sounds already. But if you listen to the sound, just after the initial hit, you get like a natural bloom. So let's hear that again. And I really want to bring that out. So I'm going to use an 1176. And for this one, I'm going to use the 1176 LN Revision E, which is the blackface. What I'm going to do with this is to turn the attack more or less all the way down and the release right up to the top. Let's turn the input up. And bring the output down a bit. And let's just hear we're matching. Now, if I play with the release, have a listen to how the sound changes. Turn it all the way down. Up to the top. You can hear that it really brings out the decay of the snare. Let's bypass that. Bring it in. Let's turn the ratio up 12 to 1. Let's hear that in the track. So now let's solo the kick and the two snares. So I'm really liking the way that that sounds. The next thing that I'm going to move on to is this snare roll here. Let's hear that. And let's hear it in context with the other snares. So it's like this pre-roll into the snare. Now for this, I'm going to use an 1176 again. But instead of using the black face, I'm going to use the blue stripe. The revision A is a lot more character than the other versions. And you can really distort it. So let's turn the input up and turn the output down a bit. And let's solo that and hear that. Let's bypass it. And in. Okay, that's already started to work for me. But again, what I'm going to do is to bring the attack down and speed the release up. Remember on the 1176s, the attack works slowest going to the left, fastest going to the right and the release works the same way. So slowest to the left and fastest to the right. So also with the 1176, you can use the all buttons in mode. So if I hold down my shift button and I click on the ratio buttons here, I can now use all buttons in. And as you can hear, that's starting to really nicely distort. Let's bypass it. And bring it in. And let's hear that in the track. So for me, that's starting to really sound great. Now, I've just noticed that I want to add some reverb to snare two. So let's add the same reverb as we used on the vocal, which is reverb one. And if I come down to check what that is, we use the EMT 140 plate on that. So let's solo the snare and hear it with the reverb. Let's turn it up. That's starting to sound great. Let's hear that in the track. Lastly, with the drums, I want to have a look at these fills. So let's have a listen to them soloed. So again, what I want to use is the 1176 blue stripe, which is the same as I use on the snare roll. So let's just copy that down. Now I might need to adjust a few things. As you can instantly hear, the all buttons in mode is not really working for this. So let's take it off by holding shift and clicking down on the buttons. Let's bring the input down a bit and turn the output up a bit. And let's put it on 12 to 1. Bypass it. And let's put it back in. 
I really love the 1176 Blue Stripe. It adds so much more character than the other versions. Again, I'm going to keep the attack on slowest and the release on fastest. Now let's hear that in the track. Join me for the next video where we're going to be moving on to mixing the other instruments. I'm Paul from Production Expert and I'll see you guys next time.